All right, Shalom Israel. First and foremost, as always, I would like to give all praises, honor, glory, respect, and blessings to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachaha, Kwadash. Salutations to the Lord's elect on the four corners of the earth. Pushing his truth and sincerity while patiently waiting for Yahweh Shah's return. And as always, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai. And I wanted to do a response video to a video that was done by the beloved Apostle Gabar, as you see right here, the title of the video, which he uploaded was, is called, Only a False Prophet Would Give You the Name. Uh, you see it right there. I really don't like calling on that name, to be honest. You know, I hate calling on that name. Um, you know, I'll just say JC. <laughs> Okay, because the true name of the Messiah, who the world ignorantly calls, you know, Jebus Cross, his name is Yahawashai. Okay. You know. And, you know, what Apostle Bar said is absolutely correct. Because. Well, when we go to. The book of Acts, right? You know what? Let me pull this up. You know, that blue letter Bible app is going to load up first. OK, first off. It tells you in the book of Numbers 23 verse 19, I don't need to get it. So I'm going to Baruch first. But in Numbers 23 verse 19, it tells you that um, it is. Uh, it tells you that Yahweh is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Isaiah 55 verse 11, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. And, and what, what, what are the word of, what, what, is, what is the word of the Lord that go forth out of his mouth? Everything that did you read about in the Holy Scriptures. For what? They are they are written and faithful and true. Uh, Revelation 19, verse 10, second Esdras, chapter uh, 15, verse 2. Okay, they are faithful and true. So the most high the most high is, is not a man that he should lie. Okay. Yahweh Shai. The most high Yahweh is not a man that he should lie. Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, is not a man that he shall lie, okay? So, when the Lord said that his soul shall his word be that go forth out of his mouth, it shall not return unto him void, that's faithful and true. That's that's actually going to happen. So, again, the word that, 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 that come out of the Lord, out of the Most High's mouth, which shall not return unto him void, that's talking about would you read in the Holy Scriptures, especially concerning prophecies? OK, especially concerning prophecy. So one prophecy we can go to to show you that we will indeed have the name of the Lord. OK. And his son is the book of Baruch, chapter three, verse eight. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return it to me void. Well, this is one of the words that, that came out of the Lord's mouth. Okay, Because remember, the Lord speaks through his, his holy prophets. The Lord speaks. The Lord speaks through the mouth of his holy prophets. So let's see what the Lord said through the prophet Baruch, who was a, a scribe of Jeremiah. Okay. Okay, Baruch chapter 3, verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity where we where thou hast scattered us uh, 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 for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to pavements according to the iniquity of our fathers which departed from the Lord our God. Okay. So let's see. 
Okay, let me see. So, see, we, we are this day in our captivity. Let me see. But that's, not, let me see. Maybe I could type it in here. Let's go. Let's type in in the land of their captivity. Okay. Let's see. In the, in the land, in the land of their cap, in the land of their captivity. Let's see, let's see what pops up here, okay? So what we're gonna do is look for the Baruch. See, I had a feeling it was in Baruch to the second chapter, okay? So let's um let's go to Baruch chapter two verse thirty one, okay. These are one of the precepts that we can go to to show you that the men of the Lord, the true men of the Lord. Uh, I'm not saying I'm a true man of the Lord, but I hope to be of the elect, okay. Uh, uh you know we are prisoners of hope as it is written, you know. And you 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 sincere brothers out there that truly hope to be of the elect. I hope you're of the elect too. Okay. So it says um, Baruch 2 verse 32. But the, the, the Lord's elect will have his name. And these are one of the precepts in the Holy Scriptures, which is a part of the word of the Most High, Yahweh, right? Right. That um that, that shall not go back to him void. So check this out. Baruch 2 verse 31. And shall know that I am the Lord, their God, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. Right. Because we are this day in our captivity. Right. They shall praise me in the land of, of, of their captivity. What is the land of our captivity today? The land of our captivity today is Babylon the Great. Which is known as the United States of America to the world. OK, to to the people of the world and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and what think upon my name. Now, you can't think upon somebody's name if you're not going to know it until the return, because according to um, IUIC here, if we just come back over here real quick. OK, oh, excuse me. OK, according to. um. According to IUIC, well, Nate was in a thumbnail of this picture, but um, according to IUIC, nobody is going to uh, know the name of the Lord until the Lord returns. And one excuse they use to justify this statement is um, the book of Revelation, where the Lord said, I will give him to him my new name. You know, not understanding what they read, okay? Because remember, before the Bible was written in um, English, it was written in Paleo Hebrew and it was written in Greek. The reason why um, the New Testament was written in Greek was because we was in captivity under the Greeks in the New Testament, okay? As a matter of fact, when, when you began reading the book of Matthew, Israel was already tributaries to the Roman Empire that was being ruled by the Edomites, the self-proclaimed, which is the self-proclaimed white man who was calling themselves Greeks and Romans, which is why we refer to the captivity under the Greeks that was uh, that had control over Rome. We called that that um, captivity the Greco Roman Empire. Because origin, the original Greeks and the, the original Romans were Japhetic people who were who called themselves Etruscans. OK, and I believe the last king of Rome was serve, was to tell us Servius uh, Servius tell us. OK. So, um. What we're going to do here, let's go to Revelation. That's why I like using this Opera app because it lets me look up words. Let's go to Revelation 3. And then we're going to type in see, 10 here. 
you know, now they, 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 you know, they like using IUIC likes using the scripture to say that nobody is going to know the name of the Lord until the Lord returns. Right. Well, that is a really st stupid statement. And the reason why I say that is because the key to salvation is knowing the name of the heavenly father and his son. OK. That's just like for an example, right? You get kicked out of somebody's house. And here it is in order to return to that person's house. In order to return to that person's house, you need the key. But how are you going to get back into the person's house without the key? You got to have the key, right? Otherwise, you're not getting back in that person's house. You know, and the only way you can get back into that person's house is if you're given the key by the person who kicked you out the house. OK. And in, in this case, we've been kicked out of the Lord's house, which is what the, 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 the land of Israel. <laughs> OK, so the only way we can return to that land is what? First, first, we got to be delivered. We got to receive salvation. But how the hell are you going to receive salvation if you ain't got the key? You, you think the Lord is just going to hang you the key as soon as he returns? Here, here's my new name, son. Well done. Nah, man. No. You got to already have the key because the scriptures speak about making yourself ready to the marriage. And what's the marriage? When Yahweh Shai returns, you know, you're going to make yourself ready to the marriage without knowing the name. Come on, man. No, you, you got to know the name. You know, before any before any woman gets married to her man on this side, you don't think she's already going to know his name? She's going to just marry a man. She don't even know his name. And, and no, it don't make no sense. No. No, the elect, which is the bride of Yahweh Shai, the, 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 the Israel of the, of the Most High, right? The elect is going to have the name of the heavenly father, Yahweh, which his name is Yahweh, and his son, the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, which that's the name of the Messiah. Let me see. That's why I wish I had my laptop because then I could just hit central F and just type in name. You see, here's another one. Revelation three and eight. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. For thou has little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name. What's an example of denying the Lord's name? Saying that nobody is going to know the name until until the Lord returns. And then you turn around and, and call on the most high, most high in Christ. Bless. Those are not names. Those are the most high is a title. There's a difference between a name and a title. A title is given to somebody that is in a uh, that is in a position of authority. You know. Skill, rank, power. That's just like on the basketball court, you got Michael Jordan, you got Kobe Bryant, you got LeBron James. You know, you got Shaquille O'Neal. Okay. They're all basketball players, aren't they? Basketball player is a title. So what? Uh, you you want to you want to uh, you want to uh, uh, get in contact with Michael Jordan. So what you gonna do? You gonna get on the microphone? Hey, yo, basketball player. They all gonna look at you like oh, which one, nigga? Basketball player. 
judge. There's many judges. God, there's many gods. Satan is a god. The angels are gods. The demons, the de demons are gods. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is a god. Michael the archangel is a god. Raphael, Rapa'ala is a god. Okay, Gabriel. Uh, Gabar, uh, Gabar Allah, that he's a god. Michael, Ma'aka Allah, he's a god. The Israelite man here on earth, which will be the so-called Negro, Latino, Native Indian man. We are gods. So which god is you talking about, bro? You see what I mean? So those are titles. Okay, I got news for you, IYC. The Most High have a name. Okay, and th this is the scripture they always go to to justify their, their stupid statement. Revelation 3 and 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Okay, and he shall go no more out. And, and I will write upon him the name of my God. Okay, and the name of, of the city of my God. Okay which is New Jerusalem. And that's going to happen when the elect gets beamed up into what the world calls UFO. Okay. And, and, and after the crowning, you know, after the rejoicing and, and, you know, all brothers coming together, how long that's going to take is the, uh, okay. The elect are going to come back down from, from what the world calls UFOs. Okay. They're going to come back down from out the chariot as what New Jerusalem. Because they're going to have those new bodies. Okay. So, it, I mean, it's not talking about, you know, Yahweh Shai is going to, you know, Yahweh Shai, he, he's going to, he's going to grab a, a magic marker. And then he's going to write on the foreheads of all of his elect men, New Jerusalem. Ladare, good, good job, my son. You made it. Come on, man. That's not what it's talking about. No, it's the, no, New Jerusalem is the Lord's elect getting those new bodies and coming back down from out of the chariots, you know, crowned. OK. And now, we're, OK. And 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 OK. So it says, which come up down out of heaven. Right. Because the chariot is going to be up there in heaven. OK. Well, what, 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 what the world calls space. OK. Which come down from heaven. From my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Okay. So, yeah. Ooh, look. There goes the word new. Okay. It's not talking about the Lord's going to have a new name. Okay. Because when you read Malachi 3 and 6, it tells you, you know, Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So when we look up this word new, because remember, the Bible was written in the Hebrew and the Greek before being translated into English. And then, of course, Latin and all that. OK, the Bible was written in the Hebrew first and then Greek. So the, the Greek word here for new, which when we say, you know, it goes back to the Greek word, it means that before the Bible was translated in English, before that word new was there, the word kainos was there. Let's listen. Strong's G 2537, kainos, kainos. Kainos, kainos, okay. Kainos, kainos, okay. So before that word new was written there, the word kainos was there in that particular precept. OK. So before the word new was there, the word kainos was there or, or kainos. 
And when we look up the definition, what do we see? We see the word new, right? But we know that it is not new. It says, as respects form, recently made fresh. Okay? Fresh. Recent. Unused. Unworn. Right. Now, when you go into that word unused, right? Well, what, what happened when we went into captivity during the Renaissance period? Okay. Was not Jeremiah, the 17th chapter fulfilled where the Lord said that he will beat that, that our, uh, we would discontinue from our heritage? What happened when when we was in slavery? Was not our nationality beaten out of us? So, 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 so when our heritage and our nationality was beaten out of us, right? What else was taken away from us? The name. So, so, for, so for that time period, when, when we was in slavery, the name of the Lord was unused. Okay, it was unused, right? Nobody was using that name. And, 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 and the Lord, you know, he further hid his name from his people by, by, by putting the spirit on, on the authors who rewrote the, the, the King James Bible, right? To, to write it in English. And to have the, the, the book, you know, written in a metaphoric fashion even though the words that are written in the bible are still the words of the prophet because the bible tells you that 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 the holy scriptures were written by men who were moved by the holy spirit which are who the prophets okay so everything we're reading here they're still the words of the holy prophets okay so the name of the Lord was unused for a certain period of time while we was in a hardcore slavery. Okay. Unworn as respect substance of a new kind, unprecedented, unprecedented novel. Okay. Uncommon, unheard of. You see, unheard of. And then, of course, they give you other, uh, you know, like, um, you go into this word new right here in Matthew 9 and 17, right? And they put new wine. Now, in this case, that word new right there would be kinos, right? Which means what? New, new wine. You see that word new there, right? Of a new kind. You see? Or it can also mean fresh. They put fresh wine. You see that? Fresh. So let's see, show their, their Greek lexicon, right? Let's go to their Greek lexicon. Herodotus down, let me see, um, I'm not reading that. My bad. Scroll down here. Okay, but that word there is fresh. Okay, that's the point I want to make. Fresh. Okay, the name of the Lord was made fresh again because after the name was taken from us during the time of slavery of 144, called Halayim La Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai. Okay, but um. Uh, after slavery, right? After uh, Abba Bivens, who is Elijah the prophet in the reincarnation, right? 
which I strongly believe he is, after he was uh, risen up, okay, uh, one of one of the uh, the essential keys that was made known uh, uh, to to our apostles who we see today was what the name. The name was made fresh into the world again. Okay. So let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, three and twelve. So it's not talking about a brand new name, like the Lord is just gonna change up His name and, and nobody is gonna know it until He does. No, man. No. Because how do you explain this? Let's go to Acts chapter two, verse twenty-one. Acts chapter two, verse twenty-one. Okay. Acts two, verse twenty-one, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right now, you got people out there who say, eh, you know, I'm, I'm saved. I'm saved. No, you're not saved. Nobody is saved until they've been beamed up into what the world calls UFOs and they've been delivered from the nuclear destruction. And in any case, the only ones that can receive salvation are Israelites that are of the Lord's elect of the nation of Israel. Those are the only ones who can receive salvation on this side. So if you're not of the elect. You're not going to receive salvation. Point blank, period. Okay. So it says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel. Okay. So according to this prophecy, right? The Lord's elect is going to know his name before he returns. Okay. Okay, we can also go to uh, uh Zechariah. Let's 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 go let's go there real quick. Zechariah chapter one verse no 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 Zechariah chapter thirteen verse nine. Okay. Zechariah chapter thirteen verse nine. Okay. OK, um, and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined. OK, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai is my God, my power. In whom I will trust. OK, so. Bam. There you go. They shall call on his name. Okay. Whom shall they call on? I believe it's uh let's see what happens if I just hit go here. No, bear with me, my phone is slow. I'm working on get, getting a new laptop, so okay. So we're we're just gonna go back here, man. Okay. You know what I'm gonna do? Hit select all. Hit copy, do that, and then go here. And let's type in, uh, let's go to Google. Hey, let's see. KJV. K 
Okay, so that's Romans 10. Let's, let's, uh, see, that's 10 verse 14, right? Let's go, let's go to 10 verse 13. Okay. Okay, here we go. Romans 10 verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see that? So this just goes to show you that the elect are going to have the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son before Yahweh, Yahweh Shai returns. I read it in Baruch, the second chapter earlier. Okay. In the land of their captivity, they shall think upon the name of the Lord. Okay. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So you need a preacher that was set up and ordained by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashom, Yahweh Shai, to give you those names. Now, like Apostle Gabar said, right? You know? Uh, only a false prophet would give you the name Jebus Cross because Jesus Christ is not the name of Yahweh Shai. I mean, oh, well, th that's not the name of the Messiah. The true name of the Messiah is Yahweh Shai. Okay. So let's type in. See, see what happens, what comes up here. They're probably going to show me the book of first Samuel's first and then, but I'm looking for the one in the book of Acts. It's talking about, oh, okay. So I, I guess they took me right. So let's go here. Acts 26, verse 14. Okay. Let's see. Is this, uh, is this, is this when, yeah, this was when Paul was speaking to, uh, Herod Agrippa. I believe this was Herod Agrippa. The second if I remember correctly from my research I did, I believe this was Herod Agrippa II because it was Herod Agrippa I that, that had James put to death. But, um, and I believe James had died before Paul met with Herod Agrippa II. Let me see. So let's read Acts chapter 26, verse 14, right? To show you that that what Apostle Gabar said is very true. Because we know that according to Hebrews, right? Let's go to Hebrews 7 and 14. We know that according to Hebrews, our Lord sprang out of Judah. So Yahawashai is a Hebrew Israelite. Let's prove that real quick. OK, and, and uh, Hebrew Hebrew Israelites, even during the time of the Roman Empire, were known for speaking uh, Hebrew primarily. OK, uh, uh, Hebrew 7 verse 14, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So, yeah, Judah is one of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. So let's read this in the book of Acts, chapter 26, verse 14. So, you know, this is um, this is when Paul was pretty much giving his, you know, his story to King Ag uh, Agrippa II, because, you know, he was being put on trial to be put to death, you know. And well, we know that Paul followed Yahawashai hardcore. So what, what was one of Yahawashai's commandments in the book of Matthew's the 10th chapter? Be ye wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So that's exactly what Paul was doing. Okay. And at the same time, 
Paul was also being a uh, supplanter. Okay, he, he was um he was supplanting King Agrippa II. You know that um is that um what scripture is that a soft answer turneth away wrath? Is that Proverbs 18? I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've been there. But the scriptures tell you a soft answer turned up away wrath. Okay? So it's not that, you know, Paul was trying to get King Agrippa to, you know, convert and, and to... You no. Know, no. King Agrippa II was, what was a, a, a Edomite. Okay? His line goes back to uh, Herod the Greek. The, the, the Idumian. Okay? And Ide Adumian is the Greek way of saying Edom. And when you look up the word Edom in the Hebrew, it's Adawam, which means red, which is why in the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, Herod was known as the red dragon. Because that dude, that dude well, well, was a Herod, the Idumian, or, or they, they call him the great, but that, that nigga was not great. But, um, you know, Herod the great, he was really a, 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 a chocolate covered Edomite. OK, he was a fucker. He was a red dragon in disguise. OK, a fucking devil, a red devil in disguise. But. um, OK, but anyways, Herod Agrippa uh, was the Edomite, but Paul was pretty much giving him his story, giving him his story, you know, uh, you know, so the, the, this is Paul pretty much talking to King Agrippa. And when he were and when we were all fallen to the earth. Right. I heard a voice speaking unto me. And saying in the Hebrew tongue. Now, let me tell you, Jesus and Christ are not Hebrew words. And first off, there's no E. There's no O, there's no U, there's no V, and there's no J in, in, in the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet. And there's only two vowels in the Paleo-Hebrew <laughs> alphabet. And those vowels are A and I. Okay. OK, so uh, so I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Yahweh Shai, OK, whom thou persecutest. Now, 2000 years ago, he would not have said I am Jesus because the letter J did not exist back then during the Greco Roman Empire. Okay. And as Apostle Gabar always say, when you look up that word Jesus, <laughs> okay, that, that Greek word there is, 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 uh, is A is Zeus. Okay. A is Zeus. So if you was to say Jesus Christ, Christ in the Greek, it would be Jesus Christos. OK. Because I believe Christos is how you say Christ in the uh, Greek, which goes back to uh, oil, which well, what did you use oil for? You used it for anointing. So it would be Jesus Christos. And we know that our Lord and Savior was not Greek. OK, he was Hebrew. He is Hebrew. OK, he was a Hebrew Israelite because Edomites are Hebrews, too. You know, yeah, it, Edomites are Hebrews, but they're Hebrew Edomites. <laughs> OK. And our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, he he's a Hebrew Israelite. <clears throat> OK. So. If Yahweh Shai, so uh, uh, if Yahweh Shai had spoke to Paul two thousand years ago in the Hebrew tongue, he would have said, "I am Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, you know, whom thou persecutest." 
Okay, I don't know how you say whom thou persecutest in the Paleo Hebrew, but he would have he would have said that in the Paleo Hebrew too. Okay. Okay, so in the Hebrew tongue, so is Nate giving his congregation the correct name? The answer is no. Okay. So furthermore, you know, um, let's go to Hosea here. Because Yahweh Shai means he is the deliverer. He is uh, uh, our he is the he is uh, the savior. OK. Let's type in Hosea here. Okay, let's see. Let me see. Hosea. Let's look up this word Hosea. Okay. Because Hosea is another word for salvation or or uh savior. Right? We know that another word for save, for he shall save his people from their sins, like it tells you in uh In uh, Matthew, he shall save his people. So another word for save is what? Salvation, savior, deliverer, deliverance. Okay. So let's see. Let me see. We see the word Hawashai there, right? We see the word Hawashai. And we, we always go into this. Okay. Um, let's look up the outline of biblical usage, uh, usage. And what do we see right there? Salvation. So that's what Yahweh Shah's name literally means. He is salvation. Okay. So how shy we see Yashai right there. Yashai. Okay. But so we see O'Shea. O'Shea is also another word for Hawashai. Okay, we see O'Shea. Okay, we see Hosea. Okay, Hosea, Hosea. Um, Hosanna, Hosanna. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I want to look up that word Hosanna too. I'm, I just want to see what that word means. Okay. Hosea. Okay. So, you know, so we know that he had a Hebrew name. The Messiah had a Hebrew name, right? So, and I've, I've done so many lessons on, on the Lord's name, man. Let's go to Matthew. Yeah, yeah. Let me just type in Matthew. Let's go to Matthew, man. Matthew, you know. And when you put two and two together, everything starts to make sense, right? 144, the water Yahweh, the water Yahweh Shai. Kahalayim la Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Matthew 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashai, right? For he shall what? For he shall save his people from their sins. You see that? The key words there is what? He save. He save. He save. Put he and save together in the Hebrew. What's the Hebrew word? What's the Hebrew word for he? It's Yah. What's the Hebrew word for save? Which the word save is another word for salvation, deliverer, savior. What's, what's another word for save? Hawashai. So when you put he and save together in the Hebrew, it's Yahawashai. 
he save, for he shall save him. That's why his name is Yahawashai, for he shall save his people from their sins. So I pray and hope that you sincere brothers and few sisters have been edified. Uh, well, I hope that you hopeful members of the elect uh, uh, in this truth and you few sisters have been edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashom, Yahweh Shai. With that, I'm going to say Shalom is on to the next one.